Today we're going to be building a dreamy, sprawling, mid-century home in Del Sol Valley, which is the world that came with The Sims 4 Get Famous. I also apologize, my dog will be snoring throughout the video. If you're not familiar with what mid-century design is, if you look around at what's trending, there's tons of mid-century styled homes and furniture around right now. We're in the middle of a massive mid-century revival. But it did begin in the 1930s. It was celebrating the optimism after World War II. There were new design processes and materials available like insulated glass. So a lot of the buildings had these brilliant floor to ceiling windows. So it brought in a lot of natural light into homes. There was this new connection with nature, bringing the outdoors indoors. And the homes were often low lying, geometric, modular in terms of their shape. And then there were also these fabulous slanted roofs. The colors that were being used was a lot of teak wood, which paired really nicely with like oranges, deep yellows, greens. So we'll see a lot of those colors. So like I said, we are gonna be building in Del Sol Valley. I thought this was the perfect world to pair with our mid-century dream house. One, because this is leaning on being a mansion. It's gonna be pretty big, so I wanted a big lot but also because there's a lot of mid-century architecture in Hollywood and also places like Palm Springs, which really kind of launched the architecture style. So I thought this was perfect, surrounded by palm trees and all of that. Right now, I'm actually doing a little bit of a different style of planning. I am putting out floor tiles to create a floor plan, and I'm also creating a sunken lounge room. So. This sunken lounge room is something that was really, really popular in particularly the 60s. A lot of people wanted the sunken lounge and it is pretty iconic in mid-century design. I'm also drawing out a corridor here. I wanted the bedrooms to be on the right-hand side of the house. And I think we're gonna have five bedrooms in total plus a potential butler's area for a live-in butler kind of close to the kitchen or a guest room. Um, but I really wanted these bedrooms to have a lot of space room for a wardrobe and also a desk in each of them and then either an ensuite or a shared bathroom close by so hoping this is going to be a really practical home to play in as well often big houses can get a little laggy or they can be hard for your sims to walk through if they're massive so hopefully this house like if you want to download it and play in it it's going to be easy for your sims to route around in and get from a to b now, in terms of the exterior of the house, I wanted to follow this idea of mid-century design being very modular looking, lots of straight lines, straight roofs, but I also felt like we had to have a slanted roof. So we're gonna pop a slanted roof on the right-hand side. And then I also wanted the outdoors to really stand out and feel like it was a part of the interior as well. So we're gonna have huge windows and then lots of greenery and kind of points of the build that dip in and out so we can fit trees um, between bedrooms or between rooms. So it's not just like one side of the house is getting nature coming in. It's gonna surround all of the house. So yeah, I'm actually really happy with the floor plan of this build and I'm so excited to furnish it with you guys. If you do wanna download the house, I'll be linking all of the custom content I'm using in furnishing it as well. Um, so make sure you download that custom content if you do wanna download. Apologies to anyone on console. I, I felt like for this build, it would be really fun to use it just to get super creative and bring the whole build to life. Right now, I am also using block paintwork just to map out which walls I want to match in wallpaper and which walls are going to have a different wallpaper. So in other words, these colors are not the final wallpapers. They're just a way for me to clearly see what walls are gonna be the same wallpaper and what walls are going to be different. And this is especially handy if you're doing a really big build with lots of different wallpapers to just kind of make it look balanced and coherent and consistent. Um, so this is a handy hint. If you guys are struggling in that department, um, you might find it easier to map it out first and then place your wallpaper. So now all of the orange sections are having stonework on them and I'm just trying to figure out what color wallpaper I wanna have. And in the end, I decided to go with white, a deep wood, maybe inspired by teak and the stonework. And I thought that worked pretty well. 
Uh, I was kind of tempted to do a bright orange or a bright yellow or something, um, but in the end I thought, let's just keep it more minimal and then we'll have more fun on the interior of the home in terms of colored walls and all of that. So once I started putting in the windows and doing some landscaping, I felt like this house was really coming to life and looking really nice and definitely was following our goal of making it a mid-century home. I also really enjoyed using some windows from Harry CC and we used actually a Max's door, but here you can see I've kind of started uh, the sunken lounge room a little bit. We're going to work on that a lot more and all of the surrounding furniture, but I just wanted to check that it was all going to actually fit into the floor plan. Sometimes it's a good idea to furnish while building and you'll see I was mapping out a bit of a master bedroom as well in the corner there. I love the floor to ceiling windows. I would love to have that in real life in my home one day. If you're interested, the actual lot we're building on is this one over here, which is actually the Bailey Moon residence. So there was an existing home here, but I decided to bulldoze it and start again. So this is what it looks like all built up from the exterior. We haven't furnished it yet, but just so you guys know what we're working with. Because it was such a big project, I found it easier to just film it as like a speed build in my own time without commentating over the top of it. Uh, I just spent like a lot of the weekend working on this. So this is what the house is looking like now that we've built the exterior. I think it looks awesome. I love the grass roof as well for a bit of fun. And there's a little pond at the front door, lots and lots of greenery, lots of nature, palm trees, ferns. Whenever I think of mid-century design, I just think about lots of ferns. Mid-century design has a lot of battens or vertical pieces of wood on the exterior and interior of homes. So I was really excited to find these items. The Kuwaiti slat window by Harry. I've also used them to detail this side of the build, which I think looks quite nice. And they offer some privacy. And then of course, if we're in Del Sol Valley, which is like LA Hollywood, of course we need a nice big pool. So I added a pool as well. So starting off with this lounge room, I actually found some shaggy carpet by Little Dicker. And I was like, oh my God, this is perfect. I am personally not a fan of shaggy carpets because it would hold on to a lot of dust in real life. But of course it suits this build perfectly. These lounges are from the David Apartment Collection by Pierism. And then this table that I put in here is by Tuds in the Second Wave Collection. These tables are also by Tuds. And with the Move Objects On Sheet, you can layer and intersect them and create really nice patterns. And they also come in different wood colors. Maybe we should go for this real orange wood. Maybe we should have a step down in the middle as well as the sides. I'm not sure if we should put another piece here. It'd be so cool to actually have a conversation pit like this. I'm not sure if you know anyone who has one of these, but they have to be one of the coolest and most iconic things from mid-century design. I love these MCM mugs by Pierism, and they definitely have a good mid-century or at least 70s, 60s and 70s vibe to them. So let's pop a couple of those around. This home would definitely be a home for entertaining. I always like to mix Max's content with custom content. I then think it, it makes it quite difficult to know what is Max's and what is custom. Okay, what should we put over here? The TV room's gonna be down here past the kitchen. So this is just our formal living area. Oh, maybe we can use this bamboo. I feel like that's definitely mid-century. And surprisingly, Scandinavian design actually influenced mid-century design a lot as well. I suppose that makes sense because they both have really clean lines, are quite minimal in some ways, and have that connection to nature and a lot of wood detailing. I feel like we need an accent chair in this corner. This piece is called the Fados Armchair by Tuds, and this is actually a real chair by a Brazilian designer. I think it was made in maybe 1968, so I, I do feel like it fits in with this build perfectly. And this is the kind of chair that can change an entire room. But I also feel like it works surprisingly well in The Sims 4 too. Hunter's done a good job there making it look Max's match. We could place another by the door over here. And I also feel like we need to have some heat control. I mean, we do have a fireplace, but we also need this. And I'm gonna tell you guys right now, this is gonna be an expensive home to live in. Your Sims are gonna want to be loaded. I mean, at this point, it's already worth 261,000 simoleons and we haven't even 
finished it yet. I love this sideboard by Tuds. Let's put up some artwork here at the front door by Harry. An entrance room definitely needs some beautiful artwork or some striking artwork. And this definitely does the job. Put a nice big plant in the corner here. That is also by Pierism, the MCN collection. And whenever I think of a mid-century home, I always think about having these battens at the front door. So I feel like it would be rude not to at least try to have these. I think it was just a way to mark where the front door is and to make it more of an entrance. Honestly, it doesn't look that good though. So this is probably the first time in a mid-century home. I'm not gonna do it. A handy hint is over here in the filter section, you can filter furniture through styles. And of course there is a mid-century style here. So maybe we can try some of these lights in the lounge room. Sometimes this can be really helpful and you can find exactly what you want, but other times you can still find plenty of mid-century items that aren't necessarily filtered. For example, I feel like this longer light of legends, which is actually from the modern Lux pack, also can pass as being mid-century, especially in the gold swatch too. Actually, I'm going to layer a couple of these and make it into a real lighting art piece at our entrance. I think that adds a little bit more drama to our formal lounge room. Oh my gosh, how good does the tile paint look? I'm so glad we got ceiling paint. It just makes such a difference. I love these doors by Harry from the Kuati. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right, pack. I think they are perfect going into our kitchen area. I think the lounge room is looking pretty much complete. So my idea for the kitchen kitchen area is to have a really long, big, generous kitchen with two benches, maybe with a bit of a curve to them. And then this side hides behind a wall to create a butler's pantry. A lot of people get confused about what a butler's pantry is. And essentially it's like a hidden part of the kitchen, not literally to be used by a butler, but where you can put, you know, an extra sink, your appliances, so they're hidden and they don't crowd the kitchen that's on display. I personally think it would be an absolute dream to have a butler's pantry. And then I was thinking of doing the dining table just here. I'm gonna use this MCM desk by PRism. I know it's technically a desk, but I think it'll work just as well as a dining table. And we could match the flooring or we could go even a lighter toned wood. I definitely wouldn't say this build is like meant to look like it was built during the mid-century era. This is a current day build inspired by it. We could go to some dream home decorated chairs maybe in this greeny color, this greeny gray color. Ooh, or we could go orange. We haven't done any orange yet. Yes, orange. And I'm not so sure about this rug. I just kind of put it there to remind me where I wanted the dining table. I already started my idea of the kitchen and the colors. This is Pierre's in Rolled Scrub Kitchen. And I do like the idea of having the lighter cabinets above. And then this, I call it baby poo green, but this greeny counter with a cream top to tie into this wood, just for a break from all of the dark wood in here. And then this wallpaper is by Little Dicker and myself in the collaboration we did, the Delicato Lounge. And I think that could be also a long tile or like a cement piece or something like that. And then here we could do our curved pieces to create a little bit more of an unusual bench top here like that. And maybe we could even have it on this side as well. And it kind of creates this pill shape, two pills meeting in the middle. It is a really big kitchen. You could definitely have a chef sim living here. Okay, I'm really not feeling this rug. So we will need to revisit the rug choice. Or we could just change these. Ooh, that's nice. Or we could do what most people would do and that's just match it like this. Or we could match it to the dark wood to keep it more cohesive. I don't know you guys, orange. I think I'm leading now towards orange or dark wood. I've come up with this idea of combining two tones of cabinets. So it ties in with the lower cabinets and makes it a little bit more interesting. The other thing is I forgot there's also these splashback pieces which we could just use because they match the top of this counter. And then we could just have the plain wall behind it. Did we want to place them over on this side as well? It does look kind of cool. I think I prefer it without. The great thing about this rolled skull collection is it's actually quite a small pack. So it's not too overwhelming if you don't want to put too much CC in your game. But it's also got like all the necessary pieces. 
So you have your sink, which can match whatever bench top you want to have. And then you have different taps available too. I forgot to show you guys, it has this really cool green top as well. Let's put a sink here, maybe a sink near the window. Actually, we'll just do the sink near the window and a sink in the butler's area or the butler's pantry. We don't have to be shy in the butler's pantry. You know, they've got enough money if they can afford this house. And then you can either place the stove and the oven separately or you can stack them. A lot of expensive homes you'll find actually have two ovens. I don't think usually two stoves though, just like a big stove. So maybe we'll do one stove and a double oven. And I love these chopping boards. I like that there's just, you know, one decor item, just nice and simple. Oh, and then we also have this fridge. Now the fridge we'll put over here in the butler's area. And I think for the rest of it, we'll just put in some Max's kitchen items. Oh, we definitely need our smoke alarm. Safety first, folks. And this is what a butler's pantry is for, to hide all of your ugly appliances. Appl kitchen appliances are so big and you can end up with so much stuff. And I'm constantly trying to fit it all into cupboards. I just really want a butler's pantry one day. I'm also gonna change these to countertops. A microwave can go here. We can have our coffee maker as well. Heck, we can even have the new pizza oven down here. I always like to have a tea maker because it's really handy for your Sims to just have a tea if they get sick. Actually, instead of this pizza maker, let's just use a waffle maker. Waffles aren't that big in Australia, so I forget that a lot of people probably have waffle makers at home. We don't really have them here. Oh, and we can hide our bin down this end as well. Perfect. I love this stereo from Get Famous. This looks very wrapped retro to me. So maybe we should pop that in there. And I do feel like we need a big painting in here. So maybe we get rid of that sconce light and put another one of these in. Maybe the leaning canvas in this room. Ooh, that's, that's very nice. And then we can put a couple of the snowy escape stools over here. In terms of a rug, we could just go this base game. Actually, no, not that one. This base game rug, because this one I feel like has that mid-century look with all of the geometric shapes, maybe just in this brownie color. You know what? That's perfect. And I actually really like the look of the ceiling extending to the wall over here, even though it's a slightly different tone of wood. I think that looks really nice. Ooh, or we could do the stone up here. And that looks really good. Maybe we'll stick with that. For the TV room, we probably should have another fireplace, because this house is expansive. So every living area is probably going to have a beautiful fireplace and a nice TV. I really like these paintings that lean against the wall, but I'm just not really sure where to put them. I have some really, really nice custom content couches I want to use that I downloaded especially for this build by Tuds in the second wave collection. I love how these have little side tables. They have a stripe pattern, which is pretty cool, but I actually love the idea of just doing the cream. And then they kind of work like modular furniture. You just piece them together. The bowling pack and Get Famous have some good mid-century items. Just depending on the swatches you pick, could, we could definitely go for this style of rug or we could go more psychedelic. But I think because we're going with more overall earthy tones, I'll see you bows. Maybe this is more our style. We could even have one chair that's like a feature chair. I was thinking we could either do a blue or an orange in here. I feel like we've already got quite a lot of greens. Or we could go yellow. Not my personal choice well it is my personal choice but like I wouldn't choose it for my house but yellow was a big color back then too what about this like I know I just said we've already done a lot of green but I feel like this is a greeny yellow like we're evolving a little bit okay it still seems like a low green I don't really feel like we have any mid-century fireplaces like that's the closest in our last build we did use some of these batten to create a asymmetrical tv spot which could actually work really nicely with this build as well. We could piece these together. The only issue is they don't fully suit the swatch of the battens. You can also see them on one side. Let's just use kitchen cabinets. And I'm just holding alt to place them. Or we could build a full TV cabinet. Ah, oh, then we can put like a big painting here leaning against the wall. Maybe we'll size it down. Okay, this is a cool idea. Ooh, that's nice. Mid-century design has a lot of built-in furniture too, which 
I would say isn't the most practical thing, even though a lot of mid-century design was trying to be practical, just because it's really hard to change or replace. You could have a little stool underneath it, tuck little ottomans here. The more I look at this, the more I want to make it a deeper orange. But I'm just not sure if that's too close to the timber color, which yeah, I think it is. I just feel like the room is too warm, so let's bring in some blue curtains. Actually, if we just make the couches blue, maybe the orange won't look as bad. Okay, now it looks really matchy-matchy. I'm just not about it. Let's get some greenery in here. I just realized one of these couches are completely the wrong color. I don't know when I changed that. Get some magazines, maybe a drink tray next to the sofa. And then over here we could get a nice lamp, maybe something like that. Let's get a side table and a cool lamp in here. Pretty cool. Maybe another lamp in the corner over here. Actually a lamp would make sense more over in this corner, otherwise we have two lamps that would be too close together. And we can have another plant instead. Also I am obsessed with this wave bench by Todd's. It is such a handy piece. You know what, the more I look at these couches, they still seem like too white and not cream enough, so I'm just gonna make them blue and we'll just do a stone wall on this side. I think that's the best that we can do. Tud's created a really cool grill collection. There's a wood burning stove, there's a wood burn oven, there's a built-in grill, duct extensions too, oh my gosh, and a counter grill. Oh I see, maybe you can like make your own. So I reckon we should put this in just because it's awesome. I think we should use some shorter windows here. Maybe we can have these windows instead and then pop these pieces corner. That is really, really cool. Oh, you can actually like stack those. Whoa. Okay, so this is the really big main bedroom area. And I was already playing around with this. I love this bed from MCM Collection by Pierism because it also has these bed heads that you can piece together and it creates something that looks very nice. You just go do 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 like that. Oh, actually no, that's for the single bed. You can use the double head, this, and you put the bed like that. And then there's the little side tables that we can put here. What color should we do? Should we do the brown or the green? I'm so stuck in the 70s today because tonight I'm making a apricot chicken, which apparently is a 70s dish. I've made it before, it's really yummy. Quite a nice painting, I could put that over here. And then I could use these rugs. This is my favorite rug ever by Little Dicka and myself for the Delicato Lounge Pack. I think these are MCM coffee tables by Pierism. If you're wondering, we just do the cream bedding. And we could have a lounge area over here. These chairs are really cool. By Tud's the Zal's Cube Love Seat. I think these are also an existing design by an established designer in the real world. Ooh, maybe the orange ones. I just thought of something. What if we did like yellow, like that yellow greeny color? It could just be a room that really brings together a heap of colors from this era. Okay, maybe that painting is better off in this room then. And then we change this one to this one. That works. Definitely need some plant. Plants. I'm starting to kind of get obsessed with this house. Like, I don't think it's a dream house in terms of that I want to live here, like me personally wanting to live here, but I think it's a dreamy mid-century home, if that makes sense. Here is I'm also made these MCM cabinets that are perfect colors for mid-century. Let's put a few of these in. There's also this beautiful sideboard too. We can hang our clothes up over here. Oh my gosh, the wig collection is amazing. Moira would love this. Oh, I just noticed these lamps. I did not see these before. That's really cool. The sideboard on the back here. Actually, maybe the wig should be on this side. Oh, and all the hair styling stuff. Actually, let's go with the light wood for a change. Actually, no, I changed my mind. I went back to the dark wood. I got scared. Okay, then here it would definitely make sense to have a mirror. This one from the Delicato Lounge Pack. Yes, please. Then maybe to finish off, we just need something at the end of the bed. This type of a thing. Oh, this one with the hint of red on it is good. And then I'm still not really sold 
hold on which rug I want to use. Like, maybe I should just be using the same one again. Maybe we just do that. Keeping it simple. I did want, like, a boom bit of orange in here. Like, I'm kind of thinking maybe we just throw an orange chair in. I just feel like we're missing out on an orange moment. Or this chair. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, this is the main bathroom. Harry has a beautiful bathroom pack that a lot of people already know. It's called the Brutalist Pack. And I think this is perfect for this build because it has these pieces with really detailed wood on them. And in the right tone, they totally suit this house. I can put the shower here. Generous shower like that. Actually, no, that's not generous. That's just like normal shower. <laughs> And I think we'll just make most of the bathrooms follow this simple look and feel. And then for a bathtub, we can just use the spa day one. And what am I missing? I'm missing a toilet. Basins, we could go round, which is fun, but I actually think this one suits the house better. Oh my gosh, we can suit, we can match the wall color. Yeah, that's kind of amazing. Kind of feel like we need to do this now. Oh, well, there's great terrazzo flooring. I also love the idea of rich brown wallpaper too. I guess it's orangey brown. Okay, I really need to put a toilet in here. Toilet can go there and then we need a little toilet paper moment over here. I think this roll is by Pierrezem. You know, I keep going back to this. This little MCM side table is so useful. It just looks so cute. Or perhaps it should go at the end of the bathtub or I don't know. I don't like that the toilet was facing the bathtub. Let's go like this and then we could put, we could create like a shower room over this side. Okay, I think we're better off just doing the neutral colored sinks. This is the upstairs bathroom. Very nice. We've gone with brown for that one. And then we've got two upstairs bedrooms, each with their own balconies. Let's do orangey red for this room. And I think all the bedrooms will just keep pretty neutral. And then that way, if you download the house, you can move whoever in and then customize it to suit the family members, however you like. Okay, now I really want to use this bed again. I got a taste of it in the main bedroom and now I'm like, I want to use it for all the bedrooms. I don't really want to cover up these windows with curtains. I might just leave them blank just so you can get the illusion of what they look like when the curtains are open, even though the curtains will always be open. And then the curtains can be on this side. Oh no, the bed's too close to the cupboards. Okay, maybe we do just have a single bed up here. Oh, I don't actually have any single bed covers for this. Yeah, I guess we'll just leave it as a double bed. We'll have a desk here with a lamp, laptop. We'll change it to black. And our trusty plant. We'll also need our trusty chair. Hmm, it's a little big, so let's just move that over slightly. Again, in black. What about a little skill building item like a guitar? Lovely. Hey, maybe this room we can go with a couple of beds. This can be the, the twin room. Ooh, maybe we can use the favorite. Wave board, thingamajig. I love that. These lights are pretty cool. Okay, we're gonna have to rearrange this because the door is too close to the bed for my liking, which means my lovely little outdoor area will have to be flipped as well. The meditation stool can go over here and make this our feature wall. I think the reason, well, the main reason why I don't like this house for me personally is it's very dark and I'm more into lighter colors. But lots of people really like the darker color scheme. Let's have some books here. A working bookshelf there. You could have a double desk here. Okay, that's a bit intense. That's too much. It looks like an office. Oh no, and I just realized the bed is so close to this door. We'll separate the beds like this and they can be a desk under one of the beds and the other bed can be over here. They can have a bookshelf, a fun dollhouse outside. So it's a little bit more kid friendly. We have a toy box. What about a double craft table so they can craft at the same time? And I feel like these walls are just a little bit bland for the kids. I feel like I don't have any retro kids wallpaper. Ooh, unless we do delicato yellow mango wallpaper. That's fun. Some dinosaurs under here. Okay, I think the house is finished. So let's do a final walkthrough. Okay, so this is what the house looks like. I've finished the other rooms because they're all very much very similar. This is the other side of the house where you can see the pool, the backyard area. You have 
a lovely rooftop balcony over there. And then this is this side of the house. And then the other side of the house. There's a few windows glitching out. I think it's might be because of the move objects, aren't you? I'm so excited. Let's go into the front door. Oh my gosh, this looks awesome. This is our front room. Such a cool house. I'm so thrilled with how this turned out. So it's quite a grand room that you walk into, which is really what I was going for. I wanted it to have a little bit of drama. We got our conversation pit. Very nice. Okay, let's head to the kitchen dining. Whee! I ended up putting some wooden beans, not beans, wooden beams into the center of the counters. I just thought it finished it off more nicely and kind of made it look less sparse and more like the kitchen had an allocated space and then the dining room had an allocated space. And I love how it looks into the lounge area. And then we've got lots of cooking space, big kitchen complete with butler's pantry area to hide all of those appliances in. What a dream. If we make our way down here to the right, there is a powder room. I'll just show you guys that. We've got a lovely circular mirror and then the other side's just a toilet. Through here is our lounge. Or maybe you'd call it a snug, I don't know, but I thought that looked quite nice. What was at first one of my least favorite rooms? I think this actually became one of my favorite rooms. Pretty cool. And you can see straight outside to the courtyard, which the whole house kind of wraps around that courtyard. Then down here, this is actually the butler area if you do play Sims with a butler in your house, or you can have this as a guest room or an extra bedroom. I thought this was nice as a more warm orange room. A nice dresser there, the door's glitched out. And then this is the bathroom. Very nice. And then the shower's just tucked here. Why don't we sneak across the courtyard? and just have a little look outside. Because remember we put in this amazing outdoor cooking area. Oh my gosh, I just realized something. We have an outdoor cooking area, but we actually have nowhere outside where you can eat. I feel like I need to quickly change that. So I'm gonna move this central bit back a bit. Okay, and then a table can just go here. Phew, that would have been so bad if I forgot that. I mean, it's really not the end of the world, but I would have not been satisfied. Okay, so just around here, gosh, I just, notice this view wow over here we have a little undercover gym but this could be a great spot for an extra enclosed room skill building area over here is the pool i can't believe people actually live in places like this and this is actually where the master bedroom is so there's a hot tub here and a bit of privacy with a little table so let's go into the master bedroom from this side even though you can walk through the rest of the house again this room i wasn't vibing with as much but now i'm walking into it again i'm really like it. I love that yellow color. Bed is so cool. Then we have the wardrobe area back here, complete with all the wigs, which is cool as. I can see Moira living here. If you've watched Shit's Creek, to the left is their bathroom, which we created before. Very nice. And then if we head out this door, we then come into the corridor where three bedrooms are that I furnished myself. We'll just have a quick look. So this is a blue room with some shaggy carpet because I felt like at least one room should have some shag shaggy rug in it. The next door I think is the bathroom. Oh yeah, so this is a nice big bathroom in here for these bedrooms to share. This is more of a green and brown bedroom. Got a nice desk area there. Then we keep going down the corridor. This house is massive. We've got another bedroom in here. So it's got six bedrooms plus the seventh the butler's bedroom. And then there's another bathroom at the end of the corridor here. So you're not gonna run out of bathrooms. And I just love the lighting here and the ceiling paint just makes all the difference. Okay, now going upstairs. So once you're upstairs, then we have the two extra bedrooms, which we furnished. We've got the green and red room. And these bedrooms are nice because they actually have balconies. I love green and red. It reminds me of Christmas. And they have their own private balcony. Whoa, whoa. And then we have our bathroom in the middle. Again, quite similar to the other bathrooms for continuity. And then the last bedroom is the kid's bedroom, which is really cute, but very, very 60s looking still very mid-century and then the balcony over on this side so let me know what you think of the dream house I think I want to do a personal dream house soon that I would live in because like I said this is definitely a mid-century dream home but probably the 
colors are a little bit dark for me. And also this is too big. Like I couldn't live in a house this big. Let me know what your favorite room is. Do you like the sunken lounge or the kitchen or any of the bedrooms? Second lounge. Let me know in the comments down below and also let me know what video you would like to see next. Thank you to my amazing members for supporting this channel. If you'd like to become a member, you can get access to emotes for comments, bonus videos every week, personal updates and more. So you can click the link in the description to check that out. Thanks so much for watching this video. As always, I hope you're having a lovely morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are in the world and I can't wait to speak to y'all soon.